How can you understand something through a beautiful feeling? But I know when I look back that every time I had that beautiful feeling of love just come to the surface, the, re the results show up in my life. The results always come out and, and reveal themselves. They might not, they might not show up right away, but any dream that we have for ourselves, any vision we have for ourselves will manifest when we learn to go deeper and deeper into that beautiful feeling. Yeah, it is in a way you know, we were reflecting on like, once again, after all these years, how do we talk about these three principles, right? You know? And it is in a way a funny task in the sense that something Keith said yesterday really stood out to me that uh, he didn't put it in these words, but that everything, when I like when Keith was talking about physics and everything all being, uh, the principles being at the base of every science. But it also took me back to that feeling and that sense that everything, everything you could possibly imagine is downstream from the principles. They are, if you will, and this is just a little analogy, the principles are this tiny pinpoint where something becomes, where nothing becomes something. And that pinpoint exists in all of us. So it is really hard in a sense to talk about the true nature of the principles, particularly mine. I, I can't really talk about mine. It's just, I'll take my best shot. <laughs> it's like, basically, I just love what Sid says about mind, and it gives me a feeling that it's that mind is the energy of all things, the intelligence of all things, the light behind the system, and the energy behind the system. And if you want, if you like to think this way, and it's the way I think about it, it is God. Not God as a personality or a character, you, you know that, you know, it's it's something deeper than that, bigger than that. And as soon as we put a name on it, you know, we, we, we put it in a box. Right? And that's really, in a way, why it's sometimes difficult to talk about that particular part of the principles. Because as soon as we open our mouths, we're putting it in a box. But we can, with a feeling, we can share that, you know, that I get a feeling when Sid talks about mind as being the source. Right? mind about being the intelligence of all things, mind about being the energy of all things. You know, I love that. I just absolutely love it. That's as much as I can say about it, though, you know, other than I'm just so grateful that Sid introduced that principle, that, that God, that energy of all things, whatever he called it, he would then every time say that's within us. That's where we're coming from. That's how we're manifesting this life. And so it's such a mystical thing to think about mind that way. And, and Sid would actually say, think about it in mystical terms. You know, it's not a practical thing. It's not, it's not an intellectual concept. Can't be. <clears throat> Particularly if you think that all intellectual concepts are downstream from the principles. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, okay. It's just a beautiful feeling to think of mind that way. And, you know, I, my hope in this life is, I know that for me, that's a set of beautiful beliefs at this point about what mind is. Right? And I just think in this life, if I just keep listening, maybe I'll get that feeling more and more and have a mystical sense of what mind is right? and where it is within me, within you. I love that it, it takes away um, more and more in, insecurity, any insecurity we have in life as a human being, because when I heard Sid do an anal analogy once of <clears throat> our our part of mind and, and the universal energy is if you took a drop, a teardrop, and dropped it in the Pacific Ocean, yeah. that 
you you're part of the ocean and I, I always love that because it made me feel like there, I don't know like a protection in life that yeah. that there's nothing to be afraid of yeah. that that we're we're always in that idea <clears throat> that we're always home and safe and uh, so that it's very comforting it's it's um it's a security. It's a deeper security, knowing that it doesn't really matter what else is going on. Home is always there, you know. Mind is always there, and it's always guiding us, whether we truly understand it or not. It's always guiding us, and it's always available, always available. And yesterday, when I was talking about consciousness, <clears throat> Sid telling me, just when you get that beautiful feeling, just see the gift of consciousness is bringing you that beautiful feeling. And I love that because I remember also, it, Sid would talk about how you, you he saw a book on consciousness and it was like this thick. <laughs> and he said that, he says, it's just an awareness. That's what conscious, consciousness is, is the gift to be aware. So that's why sometimes we prefer not to talk about it too much ourselves because it, if it's something we all, everyone on this in this call knows already and that's who they are, then somewhere they'll find that place in themselves again by the feeling, not by trying to hear what someone's describing with their intellect. Having said that, I'm going to describe it with my intellect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like thinking about consciousness in this way. You know, that when you listen to Sid's recordings, he talks about the practical. He talks about our experience. You know, things like telling us that the insecurity we feel is an illusion created by thought. But everything he says, you can see, has that deeper understanding of where, we're, where it's coming from. Right? And I feel the same way about consciousness, like there's what we do with consciousness, right? and then there's what consciousness is. You know? The interesting relationship between those things to me is the more we have a sense of what consciousness is, without any specific effort or any specific, specific idea, the more we understand what consciousness is, the more we use it in a more beautiful way, right? We use it in a more open and beautiful way. And so I, I love that idea that when we're insecure, which we all do once in a while, you know, when we get caught up, our consciousness is really just like a laser. I heard somebody say that once and I don't remember who, but it doesn't matter. I love this idea that when our consciousness is down and we're, we're insecure, our personal consciousness, it's like a laser beam. It focuses on this, and we think about that, and when we finish thinking about that, we think about this. You know, it's always a laser pointing at some narrow thing that we have to think about. When we look away from that, when we look at what consciousness is, the miracle of consciousness, right? suddenly, without any effort, that laser beam opens up, and we start to see the world from a completely different place, right? Our consciousness has, has risen to a higher perch, to a higher level of understanding. And it's a funny relationship that we can't mentally say, I'm not going to be conscious of this anymore or that anymore or whatever. I like to be conscious. We do try that, right? I like to be conscious of this or that. We all try that. And yet it's like a total opposite. It's a, it's a total paradox. That it's when we look away from what we do with consciousness and we look at what it is right and for me i'll just put it simply consciousness is simply a moment to moment we are living in the middle right now this moment right now we are living in the middle of a miracle called consciousness right? and when i just glimpse that once in a while it makes all my stuff seem so 
so insignificant, you know, it just doesn't mean anything. We're sitting in the middle of a profound miracle. Each of us, we have consciousness. We are part of that super conscious state. I only know that here in a feeling for it, but I also see the result of looking in that direction and of our consciousness opening up, opening up and seeing possibilities. That's why people see all these new possibilities, right? And they see those new possibilities because consciousness is opening up and they see it in a completely different way. But it's just the funniest thing that in order to do that, you gotta look away from how you're seeing it. You gotta look at what it is. The true nature of consciousness, profound miracle for each and every one of us in this moment right now. So we innocently use the beautiful gift of thought to pick those experiences, to pick that level of consciousness innocently and i love the fact that with this beautiful gift of thought which is just the vehicle for interpreting what we what we experience through consciousness i love that it's it's contrary to the way we were conditioned to thinking that we have to control our thoughts and and choose nice thoughts that when we when we listen and learn about the three principles, not with our intellect, but again with that feeling of of joy and, and gratitude to life, our thoughts automatically <clears throat> become balanced and more positive and and that we don't have to change them or manipulate them. That's what I was trying to do my whole life. And then when I saw that, when I learned that just knowing that your thinking is enough, but trying to fix your thinking or uh, figure it out or manipulate it just makes it worse if it's negative thinking. And that all just to, it's enough just to notice when you are in a beautiful feeling, your mind is quieter. And then if a, a, a troubles, troublesome thought comes up, you don't have to do anything to try and make it go away. Just the fact that you've got a deeper understanding of how these three principles work will heal the way you think. It will make it the way you think healthier and healthier. That's so beautiful because again, that's the how things have become misguided is that we're all taught to change who we are, to work on ourselves. Let's try. Yeah, and if, if you don't like your thinking, then there's there's something wrong with you if you're if you're having negative thoughts. Like that that was my whole upbringing, and religion was that if you're having you know negative thoughts, you're you're a bad person, <laughs> and it was drilled into me, you know, and it was so. And then to all of a sudden have somebody say that that who you really are is totally innocent. And beautiful and that your thoughts just come and go and it, it has no reflection on who you are that you are just using this beautiful gift of thought you're misusing it if you if it's bringing you a bad feeling because we're meant to be living in the beautiful feeling and thought is the gift that allows us to do that and thought mind and consciousness together Yeah. Thought is, to me, again, we can look at it in two ways. We can look at what we do with thought, and there's value in that. I mean, we can learn from that. Like, for instance, when Sid says there's no reason to be afraid of our experience, he's speaking specifically to our experience in this world of form, and that's beautiful, and it helps. The first thing I that really caught my attention idea-wise listening to Sid early on is I heard him say, 
that all insecurity is an illusion created by thought. Now, we've all heard him say that hundreds of times as you've listened. Now, when I heard that, I didn't hear it at a deep level and like had this amazing insight or anything. I, I was just intrigued intellectually, like, wow, really? And I, I do remember thinking if that was only 10% true, my entire life would be different. You know, if, if all insecurity is an illusion created by thought. Now, I didn't get that at a really deep level, but it didn't matter. You know, it's the beginning. You know, we all, I think we all start with believing something more beautiful and then it helps us get our mind quiet. And then we actually see something and know something more beautiful. And so for me, that's the way it was. Like I can almost see the progress of hearing that statement intellectually and, and you know, to feel the psychology, how big is that? You know, how big is that one statement? And all insecurity is an illusion created by thought. So I was intrigued by that. I don't know how, where it hit me here, but I know at the time it hit me here. But going forward, being intrigued got me into more of an observation without judging myself, if you will. And just plain observation. I started to notice the presence of insecurity in environments where there was nothing to be insecure about. I started to really notice mm -hmm. that. And a couple of times have a chuckle, you know, and seeing, oh, we're, we're so we're so great as human beings, you know. We're, we're so funny sometimes. And then as I listened more, and I had moments of being still and really quiet, in those moments, I began to see for at least a split second that insecurity is an illusion created by thought. And so over the years, particularly the last few years, it started to occur to me that there are beautiful things to learn in terms of what we do with thought and how we think and what it does and you know that we live at the end of our thinking. And all of those things are so true and valuable to understand. Right? But in the last few years, I've, I've had another thought. And some people have heard me say this because it strikes me as funny and I don't mind sharing it again. I was caught up in my thinking. And I may have even mentioned it earlier in this program. I don't remember. I was caught up in my thinking one day. And uh, <laughs> I was just going round and round. You know how it's like. It just keeps going round and round. And the funniest thing came to me. You know? I started remembering the words of this old rock and roll song. I don't know why it popped into my head. It just did, right? And the words of that song were, I just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. <laughs> and it made me laugh because that's what I was doing. I was sitting in the couch measuring my condition again, right? Like, it's like trying to figure out the details in an illusion. It's like, really? And it just struck me as really, really funny. And just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in, and it made me laugh, you know, and I felt so good after. And it struck me that we learn a lot about what we do with thought, but really the deepest thing is to learn what thought is, right? What it is, this beautiful, profound power, another miracle, if you will, right? And I, that experience led me to this idea that as much as we learn and we experience and we change and we grow, sometimes, sometimes, you just have to put it all aside. You make a hard right turn and you look to the mystical, right? You look to the true nature of mind, the true nature of consciousness, the true nature of thought, what it really is. And when we do that, we end up looking at our own true nature, right? And that's the most beautiful thing at all, of all, is when we see our own true nature, the other miracle of that, and, and this is an amazing com combination of, I've never thought about it this before, it's just coming to me now. It's an amazing combination when we, we look in that direction and it quiets our minds because we're not looking at the details, right? Yeah. We just have that quiet mind. And this amazing combination of, a deeper dimension of thought and deeper understanding of consciousness comes. And we actually, all of us, are able then to look back at our lives, the way we're living, our thinking, 
and see it with just profound love and understanding, right? No judgment, you know, just to see how beautiful it is to be human, how beautiful it is to be alive, how beautiful it is to be living at the end of these three principles, as a result of these three principles, right? I would say to all of us, never be afraid to put it all aside. Every once in a while, just put it aside. And look within to that beautiful mystical place. I don't know what you'll find. I got kind of got an idea, but I know it'll be beautiful. That's the gift we've all been given. That's the legacy of City Banks. His materials are a profound legacy, but for each and every one of us, the legacy he left us is that ability to put it aside and go inside and, and be home. 